This right here is a Hapsang cracker and if you are an Asian, you've been into Malaysia or any part of Southeast Asia, you've probably come across this some way or form. And for many of us Malaysians, it's a staple that we've eaten since we were really really young. You may have eaten it on its own, which is what I normally do, with tea, coffee, Milo or your favourite choice of beverage. Now, the Hapsang brand in question has been in the market since the 1950s and you may have known them as the ping pong cracker the Hup Seng cracker or whatnot. But lately, there's been some bad news on these crackers, not just Hup Seng alone, a whole slew of crackers and other biscuits found in Southeast Asia. A Hong Kong consumer report actually indicated there are some substances found in these crackers or biscuits that can actually be linked to cancer-causing concerns. As you can imagine, this led to the stock for Hup Seng to take a really nice dive down below. And so today, I really want to talk about these biscuits and crackers specifically to these cancer-causing claims, whether they are true and more importantly, whether you should continue taking these crackers or biscuits in your daily diet. Hi, my name is Leonard. I am a practicing dietitian and ex chef as well as a food science enthusiast. I talk about food, nutrition and food science in general. If you like topics like this, do consider staying around. So in the consumer report, there are two main chemicals cited to be cancer concerning. The first one is acrylamide, which I've spoken before in a video about air fryers. Do check it out if you have not. And the other one, which you may have not heard before, which is glycidol. Now a quick refresher on acrylamide. Acrylamide is a substance that is formed when starchy food, things like potatoes or bread, are heated at high temperatures, generally above 120 degrees Celsius for an extended period of time. And it's in a rodent study that has indicated that this acrylamide, when presented in high doses, can be found to be causing cancer in certain cases. Glycidol, on the other hand, is a component that is formed when oils go through a heating process, generally more than 200 degrees Celsius, through the whole refining process, so things like deodorization and bleaching of oils. So it's foods that uses these refined oils, either in itself or in other forms like margarine or shortening. Generally, you can think about things like biscuits, crackers, paste, trees for example that are mass produced that would have this glycidol content. Now it's in red tissues where glycidol or its byproducts glycidol esters that have been found to be linked to certain types of tumors and as such the International Agency for Research on Cancer or the IARC have already then labeled this as a potential group 2a carcinogen or possible human carcinogen. Now here's the thing those are small studies done in a very controlled environment in labs red tissues right? Now, when it comes to acrylamide, a large number of human studies, epidemiological studies, actually have found no consistent evidence linking cancer in humans to dietary acrylamide. Furthermore, the National Toxicology Programs report actually indicates that acrylamide is somewhat of an anticipated carcinogen in human dietary lifestyle. I mean, think about it, if you didn't eat bread, potatoes, fried rice, for example, what would life really be? Now, it's also important to note that those rodent studies the rats were fed with higher doses of acrylamide in their drinking water and we can't really have an apple to apple comparison when it comes to that when compared to humans. A lot of toxicology reports have also indicated that the way rats and humans metabolize acrylamide is also very inherently different. On the other hand, when it comes to dietary glycidol, there hasn't been any epidemiological studies that at least I can find that has indicated any direct effect from glycidol to human cancer. At the end of the day, because we excrete and metabolize everything basically that we consume, quantity or dosage really here is the key player. Now for acrylamide, the tolerable daily limit starts at around 2.6 micrograms per kilograms of body weight per person. And on the other hand, for glycidol, there hasn't really been an established upper limit as of right now when it comes to dietary glycidol. And the general consensus then is to keep it at a bare minimum. So assuming you're a 70 kilogram human, your upper limit for acrylamide would start at around 182 micrograms per day. And as for glycidol, it's to keep it at a bare minimum as much as possible. So exactly how much of these substances were actually found in these biscuits or crackers? Now, based on the consumer report, it indicated for hubs and crackers specifically, it had about 15.5 micrograms of acrylamide per cracker and about 2,100 micrograms of glycidol per kilograms of cracker. Now, assuming you are a younger Leonard and you have eaten six whole hubs and crackers as your serving size, that would bring your acrylamide exposure from those crackers alone to be around 93 micrograms. That's about a third of your daily limit when it comes to a 70 kilo human. Now, on the other hand, when it comes to glycidol, 
yes, it's stated that it's a huge number at 2,100 micrograms per kilogram of hops and crackers, but bear in mind, you know, when it comes to the European Union standards, they indicate that the upper limit should be 1,000 micrograms of glycidol per kilo of oils not crackers so again not a real apple to apple comparison here so i'm not going to compare that in specificity now based on those numbers it's slightly safe to say that it's probably okay for you to consume these crackers as long as they are not in huge amounts and in high frequency now what would huge amounts look like imagine instead of taking six crackers per serving about two to three times a week you are taking 15 crackers multiple times a day or multiple times throughout the week that would be too much now if you're really concerned about cancer maybe you have a family history for example I strongly suggest looking to areas with more concrete research and urgency. Areas like refined food intake, red meat intake, processed foods intake, not enough fruits and vegetables, not enough fiber, not enough sleep, too much stress for example, these are areas that you can actively work on right itself from today. Now these areas have been actually studied and indicated in human studies to be associated with certain types of cancers. And for most Malaysians, it's still a rare occurrence for them to meet all of these standards. But at the end of the day, if you want to eat your biscuit or cracker, you can probably go ahead and do so, just don't eat them in crazily huge amounts. One more other thing that you should also take away from this video is the fact that when it comes to articles like this that focuses on one specific food item, it's probably not really in context of the bigger picture. At the end of the day, you don't just eat biscuits, you eat other stuff too. Thanks for staying to the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving a like, share it to your friends, and if you enjoy the content like this, do even consider subscribing to the channel. I intend to make more content involving food, nutrition, and recipes, and more. And if you have a food or nutrition related concern, let me know in the comment section below, and maybe we'll make a video out of it down the road.